Okay, um, if I remember, yeah, it just ends there. <laughs> yep. Because both of those endings were actually in the, um, actual original one, so that is kind of, like, different, like, if you saw that, I was, like, trying to figure out the puzzle, because I thought that might actually do something. Uh, okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps Shut he had up, I'm trying to memo. <laughs> it was actually interesting because they actually had like different puzzles there. I was like, hold on, maybe they, there was like a puzzle that I can actually solve here. So it's like randomly going around pressing buttons. Because <laughs> like, they had all the different colours. <laughs> well, I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can try something here. Yeah, and basically I'll just cut to when I get to one of the um, other ones. When Stan coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, so going up, we are going down. We shall see what happens. What was there? Yeah, nothing behind the stairs. Ooh, car. But Stanley Can we drop just that? couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Yeah, well, All the of my things were being so, mysteriously yeah. <laughs> out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Like, example, why is the room looping? Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh my Why God! Doors not really there. Automatically behind him wherever he went, and for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply what I said repeating? Before. No, Stanley said to himself, "This is all too strange. This can't be real." And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. "I'm dreaming!" he yelled. "This is all a dream." Oh, of course. What a relief, Sammy Only logical to have explanation. Finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, "I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid." So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring oh through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much Oh my fun, god, this is so Stanley cool. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Oh my god. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... You he would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. Oh God, and no, he invited no, no. himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up. He thought to himself, I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. 
My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Nope, <laughs> still here. <laughs> of course. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? I, I explode. And everything went black. Yep. <laughs> I exploded from anger. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Of oh, course. Like, Mariella kind of woke one, up one on a day one. like any <laughs> other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. And that is another ending. <laughs> I love this game. It's like, it's the best endings. <laughs> it's like really amazing what they can come up with. Like really amazing. Okay, so I'll be back when I actually get back to one of the other choices that we had. In a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, um, I <laughs> didn't expect that I can open the broom closet. <laughs> um, just Stanley on my way. stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay, <laughs> didn't expect that I can actually open the door. <laughs> there was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Okay, I'm actually going to wait in here and see what happens. <laughs> I didn't even realise I could actually go in here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Yeah, I'm just remembering on one that was, um, a guy was walking in a broom closet. I was Are like, you ooh, broom closet. Still in the broom closet? Yep. Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I hope there might be an Easter egg or something here. <laughs> I did not expect this to open. Okay, you didn't so realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Okay, so I'm probably going to look out for more rooms like these now. Because <laughs> I didn't even expect this to open like oh, door. This is somehow <laughs> its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was my favourite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. Oh my god. Please let this be an ending. This would be freaking perfect. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh my god, I can't believe I found this. This is so awesome. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation yeah, like this, 
The responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of there's no before one it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics <laughs> and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming. Oh my god, so that the irony <laughs> it's breaking the fourth wall. the insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> oh my god, that would be perfect if you like playing this in a room full of people and had a speakers on. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm just gonna wait in here for a little bit longer to see if anything happens. But <laughs> I can't believe I actually found like this easter egg. I have th so a broom closet. I was like, no, it wasn't there a thing on the board saying that there was a person like, locked in the broom closet? And I pressed C not expecting to, to do anything and yeah, it did something. <laughs> oh my god. This is so awesome. But I didn't notice it like, <laughs> what the other two times I walked past it. I'm so gonna like probably play back through this area just to see if anything else there is I can do. I'll just probably wait here a little bit longer to see if anything else happens. I'll go and do the last choice for like this area. Nothing ah, happened. second player. It's good to have you on board. No. <laughs> I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna go in here and see if anything else happens. You happened. too. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Oh my god. Look, this is you awesome. Can the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. <laughs> oh my god, this is freaking awesome. I love this. <laughs> oh my god. This is too freaking awesome. I love this broom closet. I don't live in here. <laughs> oh my god. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind oh of God, anxiety I'm sorry, narrator. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. God, this game is just freaking awesome. Oh my God. At first the broom closet, and I just wanted to press that button and get through it. <laughs> Feeling soon oh my and God. rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay. Oh my God, I freaking love this game. <laughs> Man, this game is so freaking awesome. Storm um, the red mind control facility. Okay, we're going down this way this time. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Of course. Uh, I just love this game. It's so freaking awesome. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. No, I'm not going to do that because I've already done choices there, so... At this point, see what Stanley happened. was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. I say it's looking really dark. Okay, you show. Go down the hall. Boy. We. Look, and they're in a new area.
some reason, like, parts of this is reminding me of Portal. As the machine you know went into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, by plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Stops. <laughs> Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And I'm dropped. Okay, obviously nothing there. It's that blue thing. And a Stanley parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Ooh, pretty white room. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh my god, this is so cool. It's like all the models and stuff that they use. Oh my god, this is so cool. Okay, the two doors there. Set two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it. An exploration of the contradiction this room posed. This is actually kind of cool. This is like an extra little thing. Oh, and is this actually telling us like different pathways or no this is just telling us when we get to the two doors one and we've just read that one so it was this one corridor the person of the opening session was important to get right the corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time so basically he reaches there before after the narrator finishes speaking Okay, office layout. Blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. Path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. That was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layout that remains almost identical to the first um, iteration. Okay, and this is actually kind of cool. Okay, and then we got some doors. Um, what's this? The buttons. A selection of sounds throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of keyboard stroke and synthesized tone. Yeah, I noticed that one there. Buttons are different sounds. Okay, these are the credits. Like all the people who made it. Kind of interesting. Okay, I'm guessing that's everything I've looked at in this room. Okay, moving on. Ooh, boss's office. So that's like all the different like layers in that. And this is actually really interesting. Okay, office clock. Ooh, actually ticks. Hmm, interesting. What's this way? This is basically to a similar area. Oh, and there's one going up, and then there's another one going down here. On, I shall save it. Okay, you save. Get to save. Yep. Okay, we shall resume. <laughs> okay, underground. Yeah, so that was like an earlier version. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, an employee lounge. <laughs> it's cool. What's down here? Narration outtakes. Okay, 
I can hear voices, but you can barely hear them. Okay, Kevin Brain, the voice of the narrator, recorded dialogue for the entire game, roughly three separate times over the two years of development. There are clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have enough of that. I'm gonna be spending way too much time trying to <laughs> figure out how to get the voices there, but it's kinda hard. Okay, I've already looked at that.